Good morning. I am proud and pleased and excited to lend my voice and my support to Dan Siegel for mayor of Oakland. Some people don't know it, but Oakland belongs to us. Because Oakland belongs to us, we need effective leadership. We need leadership that cares, leadership that is sensitive, not to just one element of this community, but to every element of this community. Dan Siegel has a vision. Because he has a vision, he cares about the people of this community. Dan understands that if you live in Oakland, you should be able to stay in Oakland and not be driven out because you cannot afford to live in Oakland. And I support Dan. I believe that Dan Siegel brings to the table just what Oakland needs for this season. And so it's my pleasure and my privilege to present the next mayor of the city of Oakland, Dan Siegel. Thank you, Pastor Mayberry, and, and thank you all for being here. I, I am really on the verge of being overwhelmed. And, uh, you know, someone said to me uh, yesterday, and I don't mention anything about the 60s, and my response to that was, do you mean the 1960s are my age? You know? <laughs> and that's after listening to Gus. But uh, I really want to thank all of you for being here. Um, I wish I could call out everyone by name. But I want to mention just a few people, uh, those who have come the farthest. Uh, let me recognize J.C. Eaglesmith from uh, Plumas County, who is here. Uh, J.C. is a champion in the fight against racism and genocide against Native people in California, and I am so honored to have his support. Uh, also from uh, San Diego, we have uh, Coach Dennis Green, who some of you may have heard of. I'm so happy to have Dennis's support. Um, I, I want to call out Ignacio Chapella, who is here, who is a worldwide champion in the fight against GMOs. And just everyone, everyone. Um, you, know, you heard from Olga, my friends from the National Union of Healthcare Workers are here, my friends from the Occupy the Farm movement. I mean, we are really building something that is really, really significant. People in Oakland have been talking about the issue of safety. It's a key concern that we have. And this campaign is determined to make Oakland a safe city. And here's what I mean by that. We need people to be safe from the despair and hopelessness that comes from poverty and long-term unemployment. We need our children to be safe not only from street violence, but from the failure that comes from attending schools that do not prepare them to live productive and healthy lives as members of our society. We need safety from, for our tenants, from unjust evictions, and from the gentrification that is pushing people, particularly in our African American and Latino communities, down highway 880 and down Highway 580. We need safety for our city workers in facing attacks on their wages, health care, and pensions, and not just city workers, but other public workers as well. I, I was astonished to read about the attacks on public workers. People say they make too much because they make an income of sixty or seventy thousand dollars, which is barely livable wage here in the Bay Area. Instead of complaining about what our public workers make, we should insist that everyone make that sort of income. We need safety for women to be free from rape and sexual exploitation. We need safety for our immigrant communities to be safe from attacks by the INS on their homes and their workplaces. We need safety for our LBGT community from violence and homophobia. We need safety for our young men of color to be free from racial profiling, gang injunctions, stop and frisk campaign, and youth curfews, and police violence. We need safety for our people from malnutrition and from diabetes and from the other diseases that come about from a diet that's rich on Big Macs and Cokes. And we need safety for all of us from government spying, whether that's from the NSA or our own homegrown 
DAC. And I have said before that if we are successful in this campaign, the DAC closes the next day. Okay? The main awareness center, right? It's the local branch of the Justice Department, the NSA, and the FBI. Now, you know, these are some big thoughts, right? And uh, the question is, are, how are we going to get there? And I've got some thoughts about this, which I want to share with you today. But let me say this is a work in progress. And it's intentionally a work in progress because this campaign will succeed in creating a vision and a program for change if we all participate in it, right? So this is an outline, but we need all of you to sign up work on the program committee, come to our meetings, and help develop a program. But to begin, right, the campaign strategy has to be based upon bringing to the city of Oakland an approach that focuses on social and economic justice as the key to creating a safe city. When we talk about social justice, you know, it seems like ever since I've been in Oakland, people run for mayor and say, gosh, when I'm mayor, we're going to create a partnership with the Oakland School District to make sure that that school district succeeds. I've been here a while. It hasn't happened yet. But it's time for it to happen. The Oakland school system is decaying and sinking into the ground as we stand here today. And that has to stop. Every child deserves a quality education. Every child deserves a safe school. Every right. child deserves an opportunity to grow up and to succeed in life. And we have to make that happen through a partnership. When I'm elected, I'm going to meet with the superintendent of schools once a week to talk about our job problems. We are going to create, we are going to create quality preschool programs for every three and four year old in the city of Oakland. And, and why? because quality preschool programs are shown to be the greatest and most effective thing that we can do to level the playing field between children from affluent backgrounds and children from poor backgrounds. And it's time to do that. Actually, when Al Gore was running for president, I can't even remember how long ago that was, we had a plan to bring quality preschool to Oakland. That's how long we've been talking about this plan. We need after-school programs for every middle school student. And the way in which we're going to do that is that we are going to keep our schools open in the evenings and the weekends as places where children can study, have after-school recreation, where their parents can come in in the evening and, and take classes, adult education, whether it's English as a second language or arts or whatever it is that people need. And we're going to make these schools into community centers where people can come together and know their neighbors and be able to take action together to help yeah. create safety. And we will bring to those schools in cooperation with the county, uh, immunization programs and other health programs that we will bring to 60 neighborhoods in the city. We will also deal with the issue which is so critical and people are becoming aware of it, of food security. We need food security in the city of Oakland. We need to promote the idea of neighborhood gardens. We need to make sure that we have grocery stores throughout the city, not just in Montclair, but everywhere, so that people can get healthy, nutritious food at reasonable prices. Now, there's some controversial parts of this, and I'm not going to shy away from controversy. We talk about economic justice. What does it mean? It means an immediate increase in the minimum wage in Oakland to $15 an hour. We need to get serious about development in the city of Oakland. It's wonderful in some way that developers are coming to Oakland and say we want to spend money, we want to spend hundreds of millions. I even heard someone wants to spend a billion and a half. That's great. But, and here's the but, what's in it for us? Okay, uh, We're not open for development to make a few developers rich. We'll be open for development provided that they agree in exchange for that building permit 
to create jobs for Oakland residents and to create housing that Oakland residents can afford. Half the housing has to be low and moderate income housing, again, so that we are not pushing our people down the freeway so that they can continue to live here. And we need tough eviction controls, and we need to think about how we can develop worker co-ops as ways to employ people so that they can work, make an income, provide for themselves, and contribute to the economy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, people want to talk about the police, and I'm happy to talk about the police. <laughs> there seems to be a conflict in some people's minds about whether you can have effective policing and policing that actually protects people. We will demand to have a police department in the city of Oakland that protects people's lives, property, and their constitutional rights. And that's the bottom line here. We need to end both the court oversight of the city of Oakland's police department and the practice of paying out millions and tens of millions of dollars of judgments in order to resolve cases of police abuse. And the way we will end that oversight and those lawsuits is by having a police department that reflects the city of Oakland and that works with and respects our people so that we can have a safe community. Back in 1996, some of us, including me, uh, worked on an ordinance for community policing in Oakland. That ordinance is still in effect. It's just never been implemented. It's time for it to be implemented. What that means is that the police department is reorganized. It is decentralized. We build the department, not from the top down, but from the bottom up, where officers are assigned to our neighborhoods and they're assigned to work with the community to devise strategies. Um, you know, it's interesting, as someone who has done discrimination law for a long time, uh, one of the ironies is that in terms of dealing with racial and gender equality, one of the most effective agencies for doing that, more effective than corporations or universities, is the U.S. military. And you know why that is? Because people give orders and take orders. And the police is supposed to be a paramilitary organization. Well, it's time we had a chief who had the guts to give orders yeah. that citizen <laughs> abuse has to stop and that officers who engage in citizen abuse can look elsewhere for a job. And we just need to do this immediately. So, that's what this administration will stand for and will accomplish. But let me end with this. Uh, I was at a retreat with some friends a couple of months ago, and one of the conversations was, what is your theory of change? You know, And uh, that's a conversation that some of us have been having for a long time. And I'll tell you my theory of change. My theory of change is that the people make history. Not leaders, not government, the people make history. So if we are going to accomplish the kinds of ideas that I'm talking about, that will require the involvement of all of us and 10 times the number of people who are here today. Uh, we used to call it participatory democracy. It's, it's an old phrase, but it has a lot of currency today. And that's what we need to do. We need to build and grow and empower the people of Oakland to organize themselves, give them support to do that, to determine their own destiny. That's the way, that's the only way we will have a city that is prosperous, that works for our families and children, and that is safe in the true meaning of, of safety. Yes. And uh, let me start with this, end with this. Um, there's been a uh, kind of conversation in uh, New York and Jackson, Mississippi, and Seattle about the change that's taking, that's taking place. I think that's terrific. Uh, Oakland is the most progressive, the most diverse, the most wonderful city in the United States, and there's no reason that we should not be leading this movement so that we are not talking about Dickens' tale of two cities, but instead talking about Augustine's City on a Hill. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.